Uh, oh, so the meeting was not recording? It's recording now. Yeah, it was in pause from pause from the starting. So I thought we were going to start it. Oh. We didn't miss a lot, so don't worry about it. So basically, what, now we're looking into difference of a function from x, right? Or you said, what is another representation of this? Uh, sorry, what's the question? Uh, how else we can denote f of x? Uh, I'm not sure. Is it y? Yes, exactly. Because this is delta y over delta x raise over run. This is the function for the tangent line at a point. You see that? Yeah. That's what we've been studying last classes. So. Do you write what you're writing right now? Or are you going to give us like a real definition for derivative? I, you're going to also see it on the screen. Okay. Right now, I'm explaining you the logic. Why we, you remember we began with the slope of a second line. Mm -hmm. This was the definition of a slope of a second line. But here we apply the limit function where delta x travels to zero. When difference between two points is extremely limited. Okay. So that's why we applied limits here. Now, next step. Uh, we can rewrite delta f o x as delta f o x plus h subtract delta uh, oh sorry uh, without delta subtract f o x And here, you know that we're going to be left behind with only h, right? Yeah. After simplifying it, as h travels to 0. So you see the logic. We're moving from one step to the next one. And we are unwrapping this function. So here in the first step, you would say, limit when x equals a, like limit in the point, right? And delta x travels to zero, like an arrow. Can you go to the last slide for one second? Uh, previous one? Yeah. Oh, the annotations are off. OK, never mind. Okay, so uh, now we can, def this is our final definition of a tangent, uh, of a slope of a tangent line at a point that we reached with you, right guys? Yeah. And now let's say that this function that we are looking at is going to be x a square. Uh, f of x equals x square. I'm going to change the graph. Uh, Yusuf, Alan, can you tell me how we can plot this graph? Yeah, yeah I could do that. Um, so you would do x plus h squared subtract x squared. No, 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 no. Sorry, uh, Alan. Uh, I'm asking you to, oh, how to how to plot the graph. How do I draw it? Um, so it's x squared. So you'd want to put the first dot at zero, zero. Okay. And then it's a uh, quadratic. So it's going to be negative one and one and positive one and one. So it's going to grow up. Yeah. And then it goes to two and then. And four. Four. And then if you wanted to go up to three and nine, then you can. Yeah. Well, we can enough points to sketch it at this point, right? We're going to make a exponential dependence from left and left, left and right side. Okay. 
And uh, let's say we have some point A. Right now, we don't care what's the value of this, uh, what's the value of X, actually. We're just going to find what we're going to get after performing this operation, OK? Uh, so let me check if I can do one thing. Oh, great. So look, now we have more space. Uh, so let's split it up. And here to the left, we're going to write limit function for any given point of this graph, OK? Mm -hmm. We're writing limit when h travels to 0. And Yusuf, tell me what is going to be f of x plus h if our function is f of x a square. Uh, sorry, what's the question again? What would be... So now we're rewriting the limit function here for this specific formula, x a square. You, you understand that? Yeah. And now we need to basically simplify it and find the value where we're going to input the x variable. So f of x plus h is going to be this function when x is equal x plus h. Or uh, we can say, that's going to be, if we are looking into specific, some, uh, give me a second, it's called, sorry. You, you can think about it. So you already know what to write here. You need to define the limit function for h travels to zero. And here you have two terms in the nominator f o x plus h, deduct f o x. You need to write these two terms here, taking into account that your function that we're studying is f o x equals x square. You got the task, Yusuf? Uh, yeah. Alan, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. You want to say it? I'm saying that now we want to define our limit function. Do I say it? For the slope uh, of a tangent line at any specific, at any given point for the function x squared. Do I say it or do I mean? Well, no, uh, Yusuf, it's Yusuf try. I just repeated the question. So just solve just solve for the limit, right? Yeah, write the values, actual values. This is the general case when okay. we have some function and the value of this function is determined by x equal to x plus h. Okay, uh, and what I'm telling you is that uh, you just need to write down this formula. Is it, is it, uh... oh, here, I'll write it, wait. Or you can tell me what to write. So, yeah, you don't really need to 
write it down again. Just write the final answer. Uh, Yusuf, you can ask me a question. I can give you a hint. Or, or, or he's gone from the conference. Okay, Alan, are you with me? Yeah. So while we're waiting for Yusuf, uh, what I wanted to say eventually um, it's... is that uh, you see, we're looking at some point A of the graph. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? So let's take, uh, let's understand this as a definition for the arbitrary point. So for any point. Yeah. So it's x plus h squared. So, so we can so we can take a uh, instead of x right away. We're gonna write oh, okay f o a plus h because a is uh, some arbitrary value of x. Okay, you don't have to add the f though, right? Uh, pardon? You don't have to put the f. Is no, no, no. Uh, we have wrote it in the previous step. Oh, you want okay. The following step would be just write a, a plus h plus h squared. squared subtract a. a squared, and this a is some random x equals a. This x two, yeah, and x equals a over h. Over h. Yeah, h. If we following to simplify it, we're gonna get a square plus two a h subtract uh, plus h square. Subtract a square. These terms are simplified. Over h. So then you're left with two a plus h. Over h. And we move here. 2a plus h. h is equal to 0. zero and zero. Uh, look, I'm going to do magic. I'm going to do one step in my head. I'm going to write h because we know where it's going to be the greatest common factor for nominator and denominator, right? We sim simplify it. And in the output, we have 2a plus h. And then h is 0, so you're left with 2a. Yeah, equals 2a. But... And this a is the value of x. So now, if I tell you uh, this whole stuff, we can add in front of it now that this value m, the sl slope of a tangent line at a point. You remember? the mm -hmm. Oh, Yusuf is coming. Now I'm going to keep explaining. Hello, Yusuf. Welcome back. Hi. Uh, sorry, my computer died. No worries. So, uh, answer. Uh, should I write it on the thing? No, uh, don't worry. Let just compare it to what I wrote on the desk if it's right. Okay. So next step would be to write a plus h squared, subtract a square. Uh, why a? Because we're talking about value of this function in some arbitrary point. Uh, so we don't uh, actually know this value right away. We're just defining the general solution for any given point. Not for some specific, but for any given point. Okay. So x equals a, a some arbitrary points. It's somewhere here on the graph, maybe here, maybe here. We don't know. Uh, but we already know the formula for the slope of a tangent line in at a specific point using limit function. We When we expand it, we simplify these terms. Can you see it? Yeah. We simplify these terms, then we simplify it by dividing by greatest common factor of denominator and denominator. And the final step, we can 
apply our limit value of h travels to zero and we end up with 2a so this is actually a function that defines slope of a tangent line to a curve at any given point over the domain of the given function do you understand that yeah because if we take any value of x we're gonna find that let's say let's try it let's say a is equal to minus two okay let's put minus two in here and here we're gonna say that this function is a derivative of the initial function f of x which is x a square and the derivative of this is going to be 2x because now we can apply any value of x and we're going to find the value of a tangent slope slope of a tangent line at the given point minus 2 f of x uh, f and this is you're going to read as f prime 2x okay okay f prime 2x it, when x equals minus 2 we're just going to substitute minus 2 for x right substitute x for minus 2 and we're going to get 2 times minus 2 equal minus 4 and so it says that the tangent line would be something like that here but what we want to test if we can get the same value using the limit reasoning okay so stick in minus 2 instead of a here and you're going to see that at the end you're going to get minus 4 here right you're then you're substituting h and you're getting minus 4 you see that derivative is a function of a slope of a tangent line to a curve over the domain at any point yusuf uh, can you tell me what would be the value of a derivative if f uh, if x equals minus one uh this is the formula of your derivative for x square function uh, sorry what's the question again what is the value of the derivative of the x square function at point minus one or what is the slope of a tangent line at point minus one it would be two times x it will be and uh, x in this case minus one so, so x equals minus, minus two one x equals minus one yeah that's yeah. what it says so and if we take f equals uh, x equals uh let's say two we're gonna see that the value of that the slope would be equal to four yeah if it so it, now you just should take all of these points and here i hope you're writing it down because you're gonna need it this is and uh, at the at the beginning at that uh this is going to be I mean, this was the first line uh in your notes okay this line and in front of here write one delta 
x f um no just write f prime to x equals so next step once you got all of these points basically what you have here it's a sum function right function yeah. of the derivative this is the value of x minus 2 and uh, y, y would be minus 4 for this function right yeah if you plot it on the same graph I'm going to use another color I'm going to use blue let's say one point we have minus 2 minus four, minus two and minus four are gonna be here. Next point is minus one and uh, minus two, right? Yeah. Minus one and minus two, somewhere here. And I already can plot the graph of this function, because if you look here, you can see that it's linear function. Can you see it? Oh, okay, yeah. So we just draw a straight line through it and it should go through zero, zero. So let me make it a bit better. Something like this, okay? So what we have here, blue, is a function of the derivative of f of x, yeah. which is equals to x. And red is going to be the f x initial function, x square. Write it down in your books. Let me know once you're done uh, copying this to your book. So I, I can I would like to uh, add a little bit order into your notes. So this would be the first one, this line. You see, just write this down and the next line start with this and start it with F O A, a uh, F prime to A equals limit of a function as follows. Solution that you found the equation and now we can write this one as third line is going to be a uh, two. Can I, <clears throat> um, this X over here? Yeah. Does this have to be an X or can I put that as an A? Uh, if you write A here, you would have to write A here as well. Okay. And A here. Yeah, it's because uh, we used A for everything here, so. Uh, here, we used A when we were defining the function for an arbitrary point. Mm -hmm. And here, we're just going to substitute A for X because A are, is, t is the value that X takes. Yeah. So that's why we can eventually write F prime X of this function Basically, it's derivative of this function. It's going can be denoted as uh, this. Uh, what's you call? The, yeah, the uh, apostrophe. Apostrophe, yeah. But what's the difference between having an apostrophe and not having an apostrophe there? If if you don't have an apostrophe here, you, that it would mean that you have uh, just the initial function f o x equals x square. And if you don't have an apostrophe, it means it's just a function. 
and not derivative of a function. Okay, I just okay. But we're gonna get to the definition of derivative, though. Yeah, you're gonna see it on a screen here. I'm okay. uh, reasoning the mathematical uh, definition of a derivative here. In the first line, we showed that the limit function that defines slope of a tangent line can be represented for an arbitrary point, for any point in the domain. Mm -hmm. You see it? Okay. For It can be represented for any point in the domain of the function. And thus, we can generalize this limit function as a derivative because it's going to be our tool to undate, to f define r rate of instantaneous rate of change of any function at any given point because before we were able to identify the slope of a line right and now using this tool we would be able to identify this function for a slope of a parabola of hyperbola of any curve, okay. even for sine and cosine functions. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, did I uh, explain the, what, what you yeah. needed? Yeah. Oh, I got it. Is that uh, in the picture? Is that the slope of the the blue line? Is that the slope? Yeah, blue. Blue. No, blue is the graph of the derivative because derivative is in fact function. The negative four. Uh, no, this is the this is the domain of this function. This uh, line constructed of these points right here. Oh, is is two. The slope. Sorry. Is the to the slope? So derivative yeah. is a function that defines value of a slope of a tangent line. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're just defining the value. And this is, this blue line is the range, is the domain of values. So if you take x equals minus two, mm -hmm. and you stick it into this function for the derivative, you're gonna get minus four. Yeah. It means that this is going to be M of the initial graph. This is going to be the slope but here, it's for derivative, it's represented as value of y. You understand it? Because it's just the value of this function at point x. This is nothing more than y equals some function of x. Oh, so and negative is two is a random number. Pardon? Is negative two just a random number you pulled out? Negative two is the number that belongs to the domain of this in initial function. Because we have parabola, I can take point minus two, and function is defined in this point. At minus two, it would be equal four. Okay. So but then how did you graph the the blue line though? How did you find the value? I took one point minus two minus yep. four. Yep. How did I find minus four? Well, no, I know how, but how did you get the other points to make the line? Uh, I just oh, changed, I just took another value of x, for example, minus one. Oh, okay. And then I have minus two. And if you look here oh, okay. on two yeah. x, you can see that two x is a linear function. So it's like you just use test points then. So if you put negative five, or if you yes. put negative three, you'll get negative six. Yeah, and you can build plot the graph based on those two points. Oh, as and well. if, you get, if you get like three you get six and it just it's gonna okay yeah let's see 
So, and this graph, it's not a it's not a line that tangent to this curve at some at anyhow. This line is just the domain of a function f uh, prime to x equals m basically. M is the slope of a tangent line, and you can understand it as uh, x and m. But instead of m, you just say y because it's just the the notation of a function. So this is some values that defined by the variable. Hmm. In our in this case, variable is x, still the regular vari variable, and this function defines some value of y. And in for we just need to know the definition of this line. That this line is the range of values for the slope of a tangent line at any point. Hmm. So the line you drew is a tangent line? Uh, the blue line? Yep. No, it's plotted based on... Oh, okay, so it's just... Values, a, based on values. Right. Minus four is the value of the derivative at point minus two. Okay. You see? So it's just a regular uh, a linear line. Yeah, and note that for quadratic function, the derivative is the linear function. So the final answer would be uh, f prime x equals 2x? Yes. OK. And uh, you can plot the graph by using different points that are in domain of your f o x function. And let's say we're given uh, sine x, we would do like pretty much the same thing by plugging in the a plus h. Yes, but there you would need to use trigonometry functions to simplify it and substitute all the necessary values. And that's uh, quite a more advanced math, but there, Smart people define the derivative of a function cosine uh, x as, uh, oh, this would be written as like this. Cosine x derivative, uh, if we say here f prime x equals cosine x uh, derivative, equals sine x and okay. there are some more basically table values in at school uh, you don't need to know how trigonometry functions uh, trigonometry derivatives are calculated or you just need to uh, you just need to know the value of the derivative to solve the problems okay so we're not going to learn cosine sine well, you, you are you going to know you're going to get all the table values oh, okay Okay, I'm fine with this then. Yusuf, do you have any questions about this? Oh uh, yeah, I mean I don't, but I just like one second to copy it down. Uh yeah, sure. Take your time, and uh, we have fifteen minutes break. Okay. So, uh, Yusuf, uh, ask me any question. Uh, did you understand uh, the idea of the derivative? What derivative is? Uh yeah, sort of, but I just need to like to do more practice just in case I didn't actually understand it. Yeah, sure. We're gonna do it in second half of the class. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, finish copying it into your book, copy book, and see you in fifteen minutes. Okay, thank you.
Hello, guys. I'm back. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Hi. Hey, great. You finished copying this? Yeah, I got it. Uh, let me screenshot it. Okay. So perfect. So let's sum up, okay? Uh, here, oh, sorry, just give me a second. So let's summarize. We defined derivative of a function as limit function that evaluates slope of a tangent line at any point in the domain. You can understand it as instead of y, we would put m here and plot the graph based on m and x values. It doesn't really matter. You just need to understand that y in this function stands for the value of a slope of a tangent line at any given point of a curve. So by knowing the derivative of a function, you can define uh, instantaneous rate of change at any point, right? Yeah. Do, do you feel the connection between the tang tangent line at a specific point and instantaneous rate of change? Guys? Yeah, uh, I don't really understand, no. So uh, what is the slope of a second line of a curve, Yusuf? It's an average rate of change. Okay. Do you understand that? Yeah. If we're looking for a tangent line at a point, its slope of this line would be instantaneous rate of change. Okay. So you can say that the derivative formula is the formula for the instantaneous rate of change of any function. But there, okay. are, some, there are some limitations that are coming from the limits. You remember, we define limit if uh, we said that the sum function has a limit as x travels to some point, limit of this function, equals L only, and the uh, limit exists only F if limit from A uh, plus and A minus from the right-hand side or left-hand side to this point, if the limiting value would be the same. Remember that definition? Yeah. So, and that's also the thing about the derivative as we cannot define the limit of a function outside of the domain. For example, when we have this problem, when we have infinity or we have a jump, you see, limit from both sides would be different. It means that there is no limit at this point for a function. Oh, okay. And it's the same thing for derivative now because derivative, definition of derivative is based on the limits. And you're gonna see it later. I hope you copied this. I'm clearing the drawing, okay? One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on. Here, I'm going, uh, and why, why would we need this derivative? Derivative gives us instantaneous rate of change. And imagine there is a situation, you're driving on a highway, you got stopped. What the officer, officer measures? He measures your current speed or your instantaneous rate of change at this moment when he's, pointing his laser at you. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the implementation of a derivative function. Uh, we can say that the derivative of a function 
that describes the distance, for example, is a limit function of delta s over delta t time, right? Because yeah. distance depends on time. And the answer of this would be not m, but v, the speed. You see? Mm -hmm. So basically, derivative of the function that describes a path that you traveled would be the function that the, gives you the value of, the, of a speed at any specific point. So now you can, if you know, if you have the graph, for example, you take derivative of this function and this graph S O T, you take derivative and you're gonna have a graphical representation of all the points and each of this point would be value of x or t in this case and value of the derivative f t at this specific point right yeah basically all the values are going to give you the speed you can instead of writing this you can write just the v so and the graph that you're going to plot afterwards is going to wherever it looks like. We just need to know the function for the FOS, right? To define this graph. And now using this graph, we can find the speed at any given point, right? Here, uh, we're going to move on. Did you wrote this down? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Take a look at the definition that gave us in the book. Take a moment to read this. Let me know once you're done. So it's fairly the same thing as what we learned last class. Yeah, but now we generalize this case of a limit for arbitrary point, for any given point, and we denote it as derivative because it's going to be our tool to find a function of instantaneous rate of change of any function. Okay, so our, what does arbitrary mean? Arbitrary means uh, any point in the domain. Okay, so that the slope we are getting that could be used for instantaneous and for average, but only it could be the slope that we're gonna build is going to give us values of instantaneous rate of change at any specific point. Okay, any point. So it's it's like our formula that we could find at any point instead of having to do it for one point individually. Uh, yes. So here, to to evaluate it, you would put a value of a equals some value of x. For yeah. example, three. You're going to substitute, put it out of the brackets, and eventually, if this function was x square, you would get two x. Okay, but so... uh, the, uh, once we discover this property, we're going to see the tendency that we won't need to repeat this uh, excessive work in between by calculating the limit because we're going to define rules for derivatives. Yeah, I see. So we're looking for the formula, not the actual answer using this method. Uh, this uh, using... This is just the limit representation of derivative. This is the core principle of the derivative. Okay. You see? And this is a formula for any function. Yeah. F O A could be, uh, for example, A square. It could be A cube. It could be A cube, uh, A cube plus A square. 
you see this would be product this would be sum of two functions basically you see f o a plus g of a yep. you see yeah and if we want like to find the derivative of this there are going to be specific roles uh for this case we're just going to take derivative of each uh function each term we're going to take derivative of this term and this term and add them yes okay i see i read it already good uh so and i want you to emphasize on the last line here provided that this limit exists you see limit exists if limiting value from both sides from plus and minus is the same okay. and when and when function is defined at this point i'm just going to copy it down yeah just copy what it says in the book but what i'm saying that it's it's important to understand that derivative exists only if limit exists and that's how we're going to test functions for uh for ability to be basically uh differentiated when we differentiate some functions it means that we are breaking it into small points delta y and delta x when we do this to the function it means we're finding the derivative you can also the previous step of this would be one over delta x times y it means that we're finding the derivative of y prime x prime to x prime of x Yeah, I'm good. And here I would say, huh? Here, write this down as well. And uh, here it's going to be basically limit. And delta x travels to zero, delta y or delta x. Write this down as well. Let me know once you're done. You see, here it's a since this uh, limit plays central role in calculus, it's given its own name, derivative, specific notation, because basically it's a function of uh, instantaneous rate of change for any graph, for any formula. You got it? Yeah. Let's move forward. Uh, here, basically what we did previously, select the limit strategy to the term the derivative. So here we would say that derivative of this function, uh, where this function is uh, a x square is equal to the limit uh, when delta x travels to zero, uh, f o, delta f o x over delta x next step would be limit when h travels to zero and oh, and x equals minus three you see it's given mm -hmm. and here we would write f o minus three plus h subtract f o minus three divided by h 
and it equals minus uh, minus three plus h square subtract minus three s square and it's gonna be we, we we already know that we're gonna simplify it so it's just gonna be minus six h plus h square uh, divided by h S simplifying it and getting minus six plus h h travels to zero so it means that the derivative at uh, point x minus three would be equal how much? Yusuf, Alan? Uh, it will be negative six. Yeah, exactly. X equals minus three equals minus six. Basically what we did before, right? Yeah. Did you wrote it down, this example? Yeah. Yusuf, you uh, have any questions? Uh, one second, I'm just writing it. Uh, do you understand it? Uh, yeah, I do. Oh, great. I like how we work today, guys. Do you? Yeah. yeah. This, uh, 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 serious, if you have any considerations or anything, share, please. Because this is a really important topic. Right now, we are basically studying the core principle of the calculus. pretty easy yeah because uh, it's made from people to people because there were mathematicians who were uh def first defining derivatives and they made them to make their own life easier mm. imagine if they also had the graphs and they were always calculating the instantaneous rate of change of this graph. They just came up with the formula that we can make a function that's gonna give us value at any point. Mm -hmm. We're gonna know the instantaneous rate of change at any point in the domain. Mm -hmm. And, uh, here, I want to introduce you the first uh, principle, which is known as power principle of uh, uh, derivatives. And we're gonna define it in the following way. Uh, did you finish with this one? Yeah. Yusuf? Uh, yeah, I got it. You finished this one? Great. Let's erase it and move uh, a bit further. Here, uh, this example, again, it repeats itself. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. This is alternative way, blah, 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 same stuff. And uh, we're determining the at arbitrary point, you see, mm -hmm. for some A. And then we substitute uh, final derivative. You, you, do you remember the derivative for x f o x square? Um, two x. Exactly. So, and you would just substitute x for one of these values. You see, minus two, zero, one. Oh, so it's gonna be negative four, zero, and two. Yes, and imagine. If you know the process how to find the derivative, you don't need to calculate the limits every time. You're just going in and substituting the values for the points that you're interested in. Okay. So let's move on. Here is a graphing. You see uh, the slope of a tangent, the curve, at the point uh, p x y is given by the derivative f prime of x equals two x. You see, this is what we defined together. Mm. Uh, and the, basically, x coordinate of p is the point that we are looking at. Here on the graph, you can see it. For example, this point is x one. This point 
is x minus 2, you see? Mm -hmm. And now you're taking those points and putting them into derivative, and you got the values for the slope. Mm -hmm. And using these values, you're plotting the graph, you see, for instantaneous rate of change at any point. W y of this function is equal to instantaneous rate of change of the initial function. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. It got any questions? No? Perfect. No. Okay. Uh, and now investigation. That's the interesting part. Uh, we want to make this process more convenient, right? We want to find some patterns that emerge when we are dealing with the instantaneous rate of change for different functions. So we already know the derivative of the function uh, f o x equals x squared, right? It would be 2x. Now let's find the derivative for x to the third power, OK? Now I'm going to enlarge it. Before solving it, can I guess, would it be 3x? Yes, your guess is right. And then would it be 4x for the other one? Exactly. Uh, but not completely. We, you're still going to have a power in front of uh, okay. x. And now you're going to see y. Okay. Now let's find the derivative of uh, f o x when f o x is x to the third power. It's going to be the limit function when h travels to zero. And we're going to, would you like to substitute right away or let's write it down? x right. plus h, subtract f o x, divided by h. It would be equal to x plus h. Yusuf, tell me, what would we substitute for f o x plus h in this case? Uh, when the function is x to the third power. Uh, 3x, I mean, uh, x3. x to the power of three, sorry. X plus H to the power of three? Uh, no, we just, actually, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have X plus H to the third power, you see, substituting X for this value in the brackets. Do you see it? Yeah. Subtract F O X, X to the third power divided by H. And remember, last class, we looked into the formula for x plus h to the third power. Yes. You can also write it as x plus h times x plus h plus uh, times x plus h. But then you need to multiply these two brackets, right? Then you need to multiply a product with this bracket again to expand it completely. But we had a formula. Do you have it in your no copy books? Yeah. Um, X. Oh, oh, just a second. Okay. Uh -huh. So go ahead. X cubed. Uh, X cubed. You might need more room than that. Okay. Let's start here. X cubed. Okay. Plus three square three x squared h. Okay. Plus three eight x squared a x. And like then, this. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. It that's it, or is it multiplied by some brackets? No, that's it. That's it, yeah. Perfect. So now we're simplifying it, right? By substituting common terms. Now we have, we can see that we can extract greatest common factor, H, in the denominator, 
we're going to get 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared divided by h, right? Yeah. And if we simplify it, the next step would be 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared equals Well, Here we're impl Im implementing limit h travels to zero. This turns into zero. This turns into zero. And we have 3x square. And this is the formula for arbitrary point. This is equal to f prime uh, of x, the uh, prime to x. 3x squared. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, this would be the derivative of function x to the third power. Okay. You see it? Yeah. You understand it? Yeah. I and uh, if you're gonna keep on doing like this with every following power of X, you're gonna see the pattern. I was gonna say that I was sensing a pattern here. And we're gonna truly get the pattern. Uh, pattern would be that would derivative of f o x when x is to the power n is going to be equal n times x to the power n minus 1. Okay. And this is the uh, power principle of derivatives. Yeah. For any rational function where you have x to the exponential, x to some power, you can define the variable, or you can define the uh, derivative in this way. Even if you have pr uh, sum of two functions, let's say, you're just going to apply, and, and, and you are looking for the derivative of a sum, right? Yeah. You're just going to apply derivative to the first one, even if, if it's exponential, then you're gonna apply it um, derivative to the second function. So it's basically as a distributivity property, you know, when we're applying it to all terms in the brackets, when we have a uh, addition. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, you did you copy this down into your copy book? Oh, just one second, I almost got it. Yep. And here I'm gonna write you a few formulas that I want you to write down in your book, okay? Yeah. What are they called? The formulas? If I could put them. Uh, right. uh, write as a formula table of derivatives. So have you done uh, writing down uh, the sample example? Yeah, I got it, yeah. So now I'm going to tell you about other fun formulas for derivatives. So you can uh, evaluate them in the same way using limit function. Uh, but for some of them, you may need to more time or more expert expertise to evaluate them, OK? And here, I'm going to give you a table, a little table of the derivative formulas, and I'm going to explain them to you as much as possible. So here, we, you're going to see examples when you're going to need to take a derivative of a function where the terms with x are in the denominator. Yeah. You see? Uh, in this case, you can simply 
switch this function by representing it as negative power of x. Okay. Do, uh, do you understand this? Yeah, it's um similar to the log 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 rules. It's like uh, an advanced so you learned it. If you want to find the derivative of one over x n, you're gonna you can find the derivative of x minus n. Is that a one or an apostrophe? This is apostrophe. Okay. The, the the denoting derivative. And it would be equal to minus n times x minus n minus 1. You see? Okay. Another property you gotta remember if if you want to find the derivative of sum of two formulas. You're going to find the derivative of each one of these uh, functions. They may be polynomial, OK? If, uh, if one of your functions in here would be like this, with negative power, you would perform the same operation within this function and find its own derivative, OK? Do you get it? Yeah. And another one, I'm going to delete this. Another one is when we divide one function by another function, we want to find derivative of this operation. It's going to be f of x uh, f prime to x times uh, g x you understand why g and f it's just to imagine it's two different uh, yeah. formulas subtract f of x times g prime to x divided by uh, g x a square. Uh, let me double check it. Uh, when you're going to be working with your home assignment, you can just go to the internet, uh, for example, and type uh, derivative uh, table of derivatives and you're going to see um, all simple functions examples mm. we don't ha unfortunately we don't have enough time in the class to cover all of them because there are over i believe 20 and here you also need to include the tri trigonometry functions okay so cosine x derivative of this is going to be sine uh, minus sine x and sine x derivative is going to be mine uh, cosine x so anyway uh we're gonna have a specific task for this one part is going to be due for the next week. I want you to learn this table of derivatives. Okay. Can I clear this drawing? Did you copy it? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> I, I'm just going to show you real quick. We, we're going to look at, uh, uh, we can end class right now, or we can solve few examples. Uh, uh, so and I'm gonna give you home assignment and you go go free. Uh, what's the home assignment? Home assignment would be to learn the table of the derivatives and solve few tasks. Oh, okay. 
So here I go to Gmail, you see it? I go derivatives table. Okay. Here. Is it just that one? Or should we uh, there's lots. Yeah, there is. I, I, uh, this is for trigonometry functions. I'll search it up and print it out. Which one should I print out, though? I, I'm going to post uh, the uh, home assignment with the cheat sheet. I'm going to include these tables in there. I'm just showing you how you can search for them. Okay, okay sounds good. So here, the, on this one, I don't know, it's just super bad quality. I'm going to post them in good quality. You see, this is trigonometry functions and its derivatives. Yeah. Here, you can also denote derivative as d over delta x. Uh, it's basically d over dx of some function or, for example, d over dx of f of x is equal to f prime of x. You see? Derivative of sine function is cosine x and as follows. Oh, so d delta d over d delta. That, yeah, this basically means that it's uh, d x. over dx means one over delta x. Okay. Can you post a version that isn't? Yeah, I'm going to post it. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. So for now, we don't need it. Uh, you just need to know the power principle. Yusuf, yeah. can you tell me the power principle? Uh... Wait, the, the power principle? Yeah. So the power mm -hmm. principle is that derivative of a function of a polynomial x to the power n equal derivative of this one is equals to n times x to the power n minus one. Oh, okay, okay. You have to write it down and it's gonna be in table of derivatives. Yeah. Here is example of that. Uh, uh, you see that they have a, graph of y equals one over x and you see here we have a problem we have certain problem here approaching from right to this point and from left to this point we're going to get different limit values uh, for the, but we still can define the instantaneous rate of change for example in this case for x greater than zero but x does not equals zero you understand why? Because if x yeah. equals zero, we have f o x equals f o x f o zero equals infinity because it's one over zero. Yeah. So let's move on. Any questions about this? No. We still can define the derivative to one side from from the for example problem region but we won't have a derivative for the whole domain we're going to have two different derivatives for x greater than zero and x less than zero and both of them are not going to include x equals zero okay yeah perfect next one here uh I want you to watch this video on your own, okay? It describes uh, these cases when we have problem with function. It's five minute video, okay? 
it's not so long. It just uh, gives you a um, quick overview because we already looked into it. I want you to revise it, okay? We looked into it when we were describing limit. And you can see that limit won't exist for this function as x approaches a. Because at point a, uh, from one side, we're going to have L1. This is from positive direction. And from negative direction, we're going to have L2 for the limit, right? Limit. So we're going to say that limit of some function f of x as uh, delta x approaches 0 plus to the right and limit of f of x as delta x approaches 0 from the left, right? It's yeah. basically second approximation. You remember we had some point and we've been taking values close to this point from the left and from the right. If the A equals one, it would be 1.0001 to the right. So uh, X plus Delta X. And for this example, it would be X minus Delta X. To the left of this point, okay. some small value like 0.99. You remember it? Mm -hmm. And here we can show that limit approaching from the right and limit approaching from the left would be too different. L1 does not equal L2. If this is the case, it means uh, that the function is not differentiable at this point. A function f is said to be differentiable at a if uh, derivative exists and derivative exists if limit exists okay do you see the connection between limits and derivatives yeah yusuf do you yeah perfect guys you're amazing here is example where you would evaluate the limit from left and right you see for when x more uh, h more than zero and when h less than zero you see to the left or to the right from this point you yeah. see Wait a second. just looking at it here we have the graph which is defined as uh module modular x mm -hmm. so it, this function would have specific f o x would be x for x greater than zero and f of x would be minus uh, minus x if x less than zero. You see it? And that's why we have this uh, basically sharp angle between in the function. Do you see this? Yeah. yeah. And if you take a limit of this function as we approaching zero, you gonna you see this is the function of the instantaneous rate of change, right? You yeah. see derivative, instantaneous rate of change. And if you evaluate it for h to the right side of this point, and for the h's to the left side of this point, you're gonna see that L1 is equals minus one and L2 is equals one. Okay. So since the left-hand limit and right-hand limit are not the same, the derivative does not exist at X equals zero. Okay. Do you understand the reasoning? Yeah. Perfect. Here is the summary. Uh, you may have more time to copy it into your book, but this is all repetition of what we were writing during the class. Here's the examples, and uh, I'm just going to tell you at what uh, state the domain on which f is differentiable. You see, in this domain where x belongs to all the rational numbers. Negative two. Yeah, in negative two, 
function won't be differentiable. So it means the function is differentiable in domain for x greater than minus two and x less than minus two, but x does not equal minus two. Okay. In this domain, uh, function is differentiable. Here, another example. Again, we see that the, you also would like to test it if the limiting value is the same from both sides, but uh, let me see. What can you tell me about this function? Uh, this domain. Like it's at one. Pardon? X, uh, x is greater than one. X is less than one, but x cannot equal one. Uh. Oh, it's a square root function. It looks like a weird function. I've never seen such a square root. It's a square root function and then a inverse square root function, I think. Or not inverse, but a flipped. So wherever, to define if this function has limit in this point, you would have to calculate the limit from right side and left side, basically, and uh, see if it's the same. But mm -hmm. here we don't have the function, so we cannot evaluate the limit. We're just gonna see it. And uh, in fact, the limiting value would be different from left and right here. It would be extremely different. It would be reversed. Yeah. You see? Can you see it? Yeah. Because as we approach this point, it would be something like that. And since once we pass this point, it go it will go up. It, and it's gonna happen super quick. So we can say that the function is not differentiable at point x equals one. Yeah. It's differential, different, we can differentiate it to the left and right from that point. Yeah. Here, you see another example, infinity problem. And you also would say that it's not differentiable at x equals two. Mm -hmm. Here, it's differentiable for x, belongs to our all values it's just a straight line yeah here as well it's exponential line exponential curve we already know that it can be differentiated at any point what would be the slope of a tangent line at this point um zero yes so it means that point of derivative of this function one of the points would be minus two uh oh sorry uh minus one x minus one here you see mm -hmm. and zero we already know one of the points of the derivative you see because zero is m or y basically slope of a tangent line okay and uh, if you test it Oh, wherever here what about this function what would you say about it it's x well it's the same thing as e i would say that this function the main of this function is for x greater or equal to two right so the domain of the derivative would be the same because you see there is no empty point here Oh, okay. If it was circle on two, then we would say x greater than two. But in this case, the main would be x equal or greater than two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. At this point, x equals two, y would equal zero for for the function. But okay. for derivative, it would be something else. You need okay. to evaluate it first. It would be it would have angle like this. And uh sorry guys, we're uh, how much time is preferable for you? Hour and a half or two hours? Hour and a half. Hour and a half. So, anything, yeah. 
Mm. Here, use the definition of the derivative to find derivative of this function. I'm just going to show you a few examples, and you're going to try them on your own. OK? Uh, this is going to be part of your home assignment. I'm going to solve a. So we have function f of x minus 5x minus 8. The derivative of this function would be, oh, there is another important rule. Derivative of the constant is equals 0. But derivative of constant product some function would be equal to uh, constant times derivative of this function. You see? Yeah. And we implement this rule here. We see that we have coefficient minus five or some constant, right? So derivative of this one would be minus five times derivative of x subtract derivative of this constant and the derivative of constant is zero and what is the derivative of x to the power one yusuf can you tell me uh sorry what was the question again what is the derivative of x to the power one uh using the power principle one second x to the power n equals n times x to the power n minus 1. Well, I'm not sure. x. Is it x? It would be, so next line here, f uh, prime to x equals minus 5 times oh. 1 times x to the power zero subtract zero you see and x to the zero power we know the rule it's always equals to one so basically we can conclude that derivative of this function basically minus five x minus eight derivative of this is equals to minus five. So if we plot this graph, we're going to see that it's just a straight line, right? Where y equals minus five. And this would be, it means that the initial function was the linear function because line has constant rate of change right yeah you see it so diff uh, uh derivative of a linear function is just going to be constant derivative of quadrant function is going to be line function derivative of the third power would be quadratic function make sense yeah perfect did you copy it to a book i'm just copying right now I'm almost done, yeah. Do we even have to write x uh, to the power of zero? Uh, no, it's just my description, like detailed explanation why it is so. In your books, you can skip this step. If, if the in, in let's take a look in the next example, when f of x equals two x squared plus four x. Derivative of this function would be four times x plus four, because this is pol this is polynomial function, right? 2 times x squared using the power rule, this rule, multiplying constant 2 times n times x to the power n minus 1. And initial power was 2, minus 1 would be 1. 
You see it? Yeah. Wait, sorry. Let me just. How did you do? So you, it was two times two x power of two subtract one. So it would be. How is it four? Because it's this part is constant times function, right? It's this rule. Oh, when you deal in with derivatives. It's so it means it's two time derivative of this function. And this function is x squared. So it's going to be two times two times x two minus one. Okay. This comes from the power principle of the derivatives. So C is the constant. So that's the it's the first in this case, it's coefficient multiplier. Okay. Constant means just a number without a variable in it. Okay. So this would be your answer for B. And I'm going to also show you how to work with uh, root. Okay. And we're going to finish with that. You're going to need it for your home assignment. Did you copy this into your book? Yeah, we got it. Perfect. Last one, D. Uh, F O X equals square root of three X plus two. So the derivative of this one basically would be three X rooted plus root of two, right? Can I distribute it like that? Um, Between yeah. two terms. Yes, you can, you can. If, if we have same root, like it's second power, then we can split it up, right? And now we're going to find the derivative of this one. What is root 3x? What is the power of x in this case? Do you know, guys? Uh, negative. It's negative x. Power of x in this case would be 3 to the power of 1 divided by 3 and x to the power of oh, 1 divided by 2, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. 1 divided by 2. So this is exactly the same as x to the power of n, but in this case, n is equal 1 over 2. So your next step in... Uh, Finding the derivative would be a, find the derivative of this. You see, it's basically sum of two functions or sum of a function and a constant. And we apply derivative to a constant, we're getting zero. So square of two, uh, root of two is going to be equal zero. Okay, after, uh, after differentiation. So in here, we're going to have our coefficients 3 to the power of 3 times n minus uh, n, or oh, times n, it's times 1 over 2, right? Right? And 1 over 2, subtract 1, equals negative 1 over 2. You see it? Okay. Yes. We know we know n is one over two because oh I think you meant right one over two for the we know power one over two because it's what it says in the function, it's square root of x, right? Square root of x, it's x to the power one over two. You wrote one over three for the I, I, I sorry, it's my Mistake, it's one over two as well, because it's root of three, right? Yeah. So and this is n. Yeah, because the constant, is it because the constant? Is this a... is the constant, and this is the n, which is which was the power of x before. Yeah, okay. Power principle, x to the power n, n x, n minus one. Can you just tell me quickly how you found the n, though? 
n for this case, I just want to represent root of 3x as 3 to the power 1 or 2 times x to the power 1 over 2. And yeah. this is my n. Okay, that's your n. Okay. Oh, okay. And then in example B, we had a power of 2, so then that was our n. Yes. Okay. And then, for example, so, we had a, no, no power, so we could assume it's 1. That's how we got. Okay, yeah, I see now. So for question 3, our, our n would be 3? Pardon? For qu uh, question C, our, our power would, our n value would be 3, right? Uh, yes, n would be equal to 3, and uh, diff uh, derivative of this one is going to be derivative of the difference and derivative uh, of first function, which is 6 times x to the third power, would be 6 times 3 times x squared. And derivative of 7x is going to be 7. Okay. So let, we're done for today. I'm going to uh, submit numbers for your home assignment to the Google Drive. Please check it today, OK? OK, sounds good. And uh, I want, I'm want i going to show you one thing. Here is the book. We, we skipped a lot in the in boring part, OK? Can you see the screen now? Yeah. Uh -huh. Sorry, just give me a second. I'm gonna log in. I promise you we're gonna end this soon. We're, I, we, won't, I, we won't see each other for quite a while. Yeah, you have a good weekend. Is there gonna be no class one day? It's going to be class on Monday. Oh, it is going to be? Pardon? It's going to be a class? Uh, oh, next week is going to be a week weekends, right? It's a family day. I'm, I'm just going to text you practice assignment, okay? For Monday? Uh, for the next week, yeah, for derivatives. I want you to work on your own a little bit. Uh, just practicing the exercises, okay? Yeah. Here is examples. I want uh, this properties of limits. Where is it? Here's the derivatives. No continuity. Uh, here. You see, there's, they have plenty of examples where here, for example, they been finding the derivative of a uh, root function, you see, using the limit definition. If you would use uh, the power principle, you would get exactly the same answer. One over root of x is basically x to the power minus one over two. You see? Mm -hmm. Or oh, wherever. I want you to t look through these examples, what they proving here, just reading part. And uh, for writing, here is, you see, exercise 2.1. Yeah. I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm just going to take a few numbers, okay, from here until Monday. Just solve a few examples. And on Monday, I'm going to send you a new set of practicing, okay? Okay. okay. Thank you, guys. And uh, thank you for today's class. I appreciate your time. You have a very good afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Any questions? No. Perfect. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.